politics about split screen moments. I mean, we talk about a lot. When you see basically the differences between the two candidates, say Donald Trump and Joe Biden or whatever it may be. Well, today feels more like a triple screen. You can see it right there on your screen. Vice President Kamala Harris was in Indiana speaking to supporters today. President Biden is about to address the nation from the Oval Office in about two hours. And Donald Trump is about to hold his first rally since Biden quit the race. All of that is happening today. So, yeah, it's fair to say there's a lot going on, which is kind of an evergreen statement these days. We're hoping to get some excerpts from Biden's address. And if we do, we will bring those to you as soon as we have them. But as we're waiting for that, let's talk about what's happened over the last couple of days and what's what's happening moving forward. With just over 100 days until Election Day, Harris is running a very compressed campaign. Today in Indianapolis, she spoke before a historically black sorority where she went straight at the choice in this election. Ours is a fight for the future. And ours is a fight for freedom. Across our nation, we are witnessing a full-on assault on hard-fought, hard-won freedoms and rights. The freedom to vote. The freedom to be safe from gun violence. The freedom to live without fear of bigotry and hate. The freedom to love who you love openly and with pride. These extremists want to take us back, but we are not going back. We are not going back. We are not going back. I mean, she's only been on the trail for two days. She's she's hitting the ground running, I think it's fair to say. And I'm going to talk to a reporter traveling with Harris in just a few minutes. It's pretty clear this new 2024 race, just four days old again now, is, is in full swing already. Harris is the de facto Democratic nominee for president. She's currently in the process of vetting vice presidential candidates, and the DNC has given her a deadline of two weeks from today to make her a choice to ensure her ticket is on every state ballot, given those deadlines are coming up in just a couple of weeks. And as we look to the road ahead, it's important to understand that every candidate has a slightly different coalition. That's okay. Biden couldn't recreate the exact Obama coalition, and Harris's coalition isn't going to look exactly like Biden's from 2020. You know why? Her superpowers are different. Her challenges are going to be different, too. It's all about getting to 270 electoral votes. And today, the Harris campaign put out a memo on her path to victory and what it would look like. The memo makes a strong case about her ability to hold on to the key parts of the Biden-Harris coalition. With black voters, it says the vice president has a 44-point advantage compared with Trump. She also runs 21 points better than Trump with women and 25 points better with young voters. It also says that Team Harris, they think that they can expand the map beyond that. The memo says, quote, Drawing the support of voters who have moved towards Democrats since the 2020 election, in many cases, these voters did not vote for the Biden-Harris ticket in 2020, but came out in support of Democrats in 2022, as Donald Trump's Republican Party grew more and more extreme. And adding, quote, about 7 percent of voters remain undecided in this race, and these voters are disproportionately black, Latino and under 30, all groups that favor Harris, according to the memo. And expanding that coalition will be aided in part by her strength in talking about the Democratic bread and butter issue, women's rights. Harris is a very effective communicator on a lot of things, but on this particular issue. She makes it personal. She's able to draw a sharp contrast between Democrats and Republicans on reproductive freedom. And she keeps on doing it on the trail. You know, when he was president, Donald Trump, former president, handpicked three members of the United States Supreme Court because he intended for them to overturn Roe v. Wade. The United States Supreme Court, previously the court of Thurgood and RBG. And as he intended, they did. Well, let me tell you something. When I am president of the United States, and when Congress passes a law to restore those freedoms, I will sign it into law. We are not playing around. We're not playing around. The Harris campaign says that 76 percent of people have identified abortion rights as important in this election, including 69 percent of young people. So that's where the race sits today. 
with, again, just over 100 days left. We've got it all covered tonight in this unique and dramatic moment in American political history. Joining me to start this conversation and kick it all off are two people I know well, you know well. First is Cornell Belcher, Democratic pollster, and the other is Jennifer Palmieri, former White House communications director for Barack Obama. Okay, there's a lot to get here to here. To here. Cornell, let me start with you, because um, there, the memo they put out today, which I just outlined some key details of it, and I want to ask you about one of the first points, which is that this argument that that, that, that the Vice President Harris could keep the Biden coalition. Talk to me a little bit about your take on that and maybe about some areas where she has greater strengths and areas where she maybe 